I'm here with Jane Bricks and we're going to take a never before seen look at his organized parts collection here and how he builds all the incredible things that you see in his Lego city. So now we're back here behind the scenes in the parts collection and this is where all the magic happens before First time it's moved ever into seen the city. On film. Yes. <laughs> First time here, so if you want to take us through kind of how you sort here and how you figure out what you're going to pull bricks from. Yeah, yeah, so from this corner, I mean this is the easiest corner to look at because it's done by color and it kind of depends on how much that I have of a given color. So here I've got like rectangular you know, parts, mm -hmm. here I've got slopes that have sharp edges and slopes that have rounded <laughs> edges and you know cur curves and then plates. Uh, some colors, you know, I only have enough to fit into one bin, so I'll just mix it all together. And then some other ones will have like the, the grays, the grays, the whites, the, the blacks will be rectangular stuff, sharp slopes, roundy things and, and roundy you know, curves, uh, one by plates, two by plates, and then uh, miscellaneous you know, plates, uh, wedge, wedge plates and, and such. But then after that, it starts to get a little bit more funky. So I've got, uh, Larger plates, I've got my prints and... This is the miscellaneous grab. <laughs> yeah, and then even even prints and stickers get into like little stuff. You got some larger, you know, larger plate and modified tile mm -hmm. stuff. These are gonna be all uh, consoles and computer looking things, just numbers. You know, it gets, it gets pretty crazy after a while. And this is all just looking at, looking at prints, but then uh, some of the stuff gets into finer, you know, smaller, smaller kind of sub bins to mm -hmm. to really get into some of the things that I have lower quantities of. So these are all the, the really special, you know, especially special pieces divided up a lot more, you know, more finely. And some of the, some of the places you'll see like this has the same stuff as here. It's just because of the, the size of the bins. I use all uh, Sterlite, S-T-E-R-I-L-I-T-E -E, uh, bins. I just get them from Walmart, Amazon, Target. Okay, they're you know. easy, easily to pick up if people want to start organizing this way. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I think Target tends to have kind of the, the best selection of, of different ones for for not only you know the large bins, but getting into some of the, the smaller That's sub a, a nice flex tube divisions. collection. <laughs> yeah, a lot of this stuff is eventually going to be used for the Planetary Defense Force base. So okay. a lot of background stuff where you want to have that that you know those those pipe like greebling elements around. <laughs> Always oh, yeah. very important for sci-fi builds. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Fences and stuff. I'm not going to go through all of these, but just kind of giving you an idea of, of you know, the, the range and mm -hmm. kind of how I separate things out. So, you know, the main types of bricks are separated out by color, but then beyond that, it's more by function. So anything string related here, anything somewhat kind of rotor or propeller related there. And then some of them will be by exact shape, like, you know, the one by two grills will be all together and then some of them will be grouped a little bit more like wedge plates will be one by twos and one by ones and <laughs> i remember the day when this bin right here was just that just <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the idea of how it's grown over the years. <laughs> yes yeah mostly from this stuff is mostly from taking just taking sets apart okay over, over time I, when i make brick link orders it's usually for a specific purpose so i'll use those pieces up or it's to prepare for a build that I'm going to do, that I know I'm going to do in the future, or at least to have those parts that are going to inspire me to do a specific build mm -hmm. in the future. And yeah, it pretty much continues on to um, like the clips and, and you know pieces that'll hold on to bars. And these are just one buys. This is also separated out from, from the one by ones. Here I've got the ones with just the clips that are larger than one by one. Ones with the bars that are larger <laughs> than one by one. You know, things, uh, studs on, on the side construction, so one by one snot pieces of, of all types. A very useful piece, I think, for, for every type of Lego build there. Yes, yes, absolutely essential. Larger than one by one. <laughs> Brackets and more specialized snot pieces. We're getting more and more of those over time. Mm -hmm. And then the, the bigger brackets. This one has just exploded. So many city sets have these now. It's kind of the, the, the mainstay for getting fronts on on trucks and, and stuff right and then the uh, more uh, s l shaped z shaped brackets <laughs> of different types um 
textured bricks, you know, the I've got the masonry stuff. I've got the. I, I love the old like wooden palisade type pieces. Palisade, there. yes, yeah, yeah, yes. From the west, the western type of stuff. Exactly. I love those all the all the, the textures that mm -hmm. you know are kind of easy easy to get textures, and then things that will allow me to to angle stuff. So the the clicky ones. Uh, I've got some of the the older style ones as well. These are still with the the ratcheted style, but the older style ones. Man, they made. They made so many of, of these types of pieces before, the, the hinge parts of, of different types and shapes that they just don't make anymore. They're so useful, <laughs> especially if you want to make a small vehicle build or a tractor or something. These arm pieces that you can fold in all kinds of different mm -hmm. ways, they just don't do that anymore. That's why it's, again, BrickLink. Yeah, it's so right. important Collect to be able to get to that, vintage <laughs> that vintage old stuff. Pieces. Yeah, and this, yeah, this pretty much continues on with, with like this row continues on with things that move and allow you to put things at angles. Eventually, we get over to uh, like round things. <laughs> Large round, round, round cylinder, panel, so cylinder <laughs> quarter cylinder, half cylinder. Uh, I guess they call those cylinder pieces now. And larger round things. Some of these things, you know, don't make sense to anybody but me in terms of you know what things I put together. <laughs> Wire cones in there with. With domes. That's, well, the important yeah, thing is you know your system, and I think that's, that's, right. that's a key when a lot of people start figuring really out like is. how they're going to sort. It's yes. like don't get too caught up on you know what other people are doing. Just figure it out as long as you know where things are. That's the key. There isn't a way to do it. Yeah. And some folks will just go by color. Some will go by color and and shape. You know, if you have a smaller collection or if you have a lot of space, you have a lot of bins, then maybe you'll you know you go by both. And definitely whatever is most convenient for you. Here, you know, I've done a hybrid, so I've done some stuff by color and some stuff by shape. It's just worked out for me, and I have changed it over time. You know, there are some things that used to be done by color that are now done by by shape or mm -hmm. by utility. This is all vehicle-related stuff. Right. To separate out, you know, different Tire. sizes of wheels and tires, <laughs> getting to the bigger ones, and then treads down below. And then the, the next one over is going to be mostly... Uh, transparent stuff and uh, windows, so some okay. of the, the panel pieces that are transparent. I'm sure for city building, building this stuff comes in handy frequently. For yeah, and these stuff. these are the ones that I run out of most when I need them. Uh, not so much with the the windscreens. You know, fortunately, those are those are fairly plentiful. But for uh, doors and windows for buildings, every time I start a new building, I have to make a. <laughs> A, a brick link order pretty quickly because even though I mean it looks like there's a ton of stuff here right especially as you get down into the the actual just regular you know windows mm -hmm. like small windows but you know several types here but you know I placed this order for this is probably a hundred of these in here but uh, that'll get used up in a single build right easily, exactly. you know and, and that was kind of a, a frustration uh, order right there actually <laughs> where I just kept running out of stuff and I also got the the larger the larger uh, Four, four by three, I think, uh, windows these are. And I also separated out glass where I have you know, just more random shapes and doors and such, but I have uh, individual glass pieces where needed. These are doors <laughs> and some things that can be used as windows. Eventually, I'll make a building just with these. I got these because I found a BrickLink seller that had just a ton of these you know, door insert sized you know, window pieces in red, transparent red. Wow. You know, so many. <laughs> and you just don't see stuff, you know, in, in weird colors that frequently. So eventually I will make an entire building or something that is just inspired by those pieces because mm -hmm. of that order that I made. <laughs> and then miss every collection, every single parts collection in existence will have the miscellaneous bin or bins. And yeah. it's usually bins. I have many miscellaneous bins. <laughs> Anybody who's, who's looking to organize their parts, don't worry. If you get to a point where you just can't sort anymore, you need to just say, all this other stuff goes here. Mm -hmm. I have lots of those. <laughs> so this is one, all that other stuff goes here. One, and some of them have been you know, separated out into, into bags where, where possible, but it'll large pieces in yeah. general. I mean, There's, you look at a piece like this, and obviously that doesn't really belong with it. Right. <laughs> what, 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 what? These are at least supports, you mm -hmm. know, structure pieces, but come on. <laughs> I mean, what what is that? Right. It's a front of a of a Fabuland, you know, uh, biplane, I guess. 
<laughs> a flying saucer top piece. Indiana Jones, you know, <laughs> giant, the, the giant Roth stone. Rock Raiders cage. Yep, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> a giant bathtub from, I think this is from Scala. I think Even, so, yeah. that looks like it, yeah. But I mean, eventually that'll make a really nice luxury uh, mansion bathtub mm -hmm. for, you know, several minifigs <laughs> to use at the same time. But, you know, that, the miscellaneous will happen. So you've got to be able to embrace it. <laughs> and otherwise you will absolutely lose your mind. Fortunately, I finally get back to a little bit of, of semblance of, of reasonability with some smaller foliage pieces. So the flowers and flower stems for the most part, and you'll see some other stuff in there as well. And then some of the, the preformed, you know, trees and bushes. A lot of people don't like these. Um, and I fully understand that because of you know, if you if you make your own stuff from from the smaller pieces and from the smaller uh, pieces of foliage, it'll look so much better. Right. You know, stuff from this bin using these to make trees looks so much better. But I've got that nostalgia. <laughs> I grew up in the '80s mm -hmm. looking at Lego catalogs, and they all had just tons and tons of these set up in right. the background. So many of them. So it's that classic look for sure. Yeah, right? Definitely yeah. If that's what you're trying to go yeah, for it, with the display. Yeah, it doesn't really fit with modern stuff, but. I try to make it fit as much as I can, just, just for the nostalgia. Uh, some rocks and then the big ugly rock pieces. I've, I've gone through many bins worth of these making the, the mountain. This is what's, what's left for now, but probably more of those will be used up soon. And then the minifigure stuff. So again, with the, the idea of the miscellany bin, you see mm -hmm. I just recently put some of the most recent ones, extras they have back here, but just ones that I've decided to keep to, uh, together for the most part. Many figures that I find to be inter interesting altogether, you know, on the whole, as full figures, as opposed to taking them apart to use them to make custom stuff. And some of these things I'll take apart eventually. These, the nano figs, I love obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I will. I look forward to making like at least a toy store or uh, a house of somebody that has a huge figures collection, you know, <laughs> and put a bunch of those in there. I've got some of the, the printed ones as well. Uh, animals extra animals. I will be making a pet store and like I mentioned already, I'll be expanding my zoo. Right. So a lot of this stuff will definitely be put to use in good time. And these are also extra minifigures kind of sorted by, uh, by theme in this case. So Ninjago here, the friend stuff with all the hair removed looks very scary. <laughs> <laughs> the disturbing friends. <laughs> it, collection. Exactly. So we won't talk about that. We'll just put that under, under here, but the hair pieces are useful. Uh, classic or classic like space guys, Lego movie stuff. You know, some of these I will probably be moving into. This is just a little extra uh, Star Wars mm -hmm. stuff. I missed, missed in the other room. In some of the, the shelves have some Star Wars figures. But, you know, some of these I will eventually be moving into the Mellonby District, the, the viewer-inspired, viewer-directed area of the city because I can you know, and that's an area where going across different themes will be okay. A lot of this stuff doesn't make sense to have in, in New Jang City proper, right. you know, because it's supposed to be semi-realistic, but, you know, good good fodder for for uh, little little place, placements and little uh, little references, you know, to some things, again, from pop culture and from different themes that will eventually work out, maybe. And some of them I'll just end up tearing apart and using individually, such as from this next column over, my minifig construction kit. Oh, so, yeah. Heads, male or uh, gender neutral heads, you know, uh, some of the ones of, of off colors, because I, I try to stick with yellow and, and darker, just it, it looks more generic, mm -hmm. you know. I find that the, the lighter colored, kind of the realistic uh, Caucasian colored, flesh colored ones don't, just don't mix that well. With the with the yellow, right? Ones. You know, just visually doesn't doesn't look that good. Mm. But I use them from time to time. But heads and some miscellaneous pieces, uh, female specific faces and hair pieces. And sometimes I'll go back and forth. You know, mix things together. Definitely female specific torsos. Uh, although you know there are plenty of regular torsos that'll work for mm. for either uh, hair pieces and headgear starts here. I've separated out a little bit, so some regular hair. These are all like caps over here. Some facial hair pieces, 
larger brimmed hats. Such an incredible like variety of the, the hair and hat pieces yeah, they made. It's yeah. so amazing. There's so much you can and do with that. And they just keep adding every <laughs> single year with more specific things. And I love the, the different colors that they'll do also, like off colors. Mm -hmm. That's great. You know, because, I mean, it's all, it's all fantasy world anyway. So why not have a sand blue colored spiky hair piece? Or, you know, this is obviously from the Joker, but, you know, put it on a regular person. Why not? Mm -hmm. This is from Aquaman, but why not put it on a regular person? You know, people dye their hair in real life. But I love having that, that variety available and some of the, the weird stuff. More headgear, again, <laughs> including also some of the, you know, the larger costume pieces and some of the, uh, the space full survival suits, parts, torsos that can be used for anybody. Uh, at one point, this was just ones I had way too many of and don't usually use, but you'll see in some cases, I'll keep the the uh, uh, the leg pieces mm -hmm. with them just because it, they really, really go together. And eventually I might separate them, maybe not. Uh, legs that are not printed, legs that are printed. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got a different sorted collection for those. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes, you know, you, you just want to have a little bit of extra extra texture, even if it's not a specific look that you're going mm -hmm. for. You just want something that's a little bit a little bit different. So I just separated those out or try to keep them separated out. And then food items. Yes. <laughs> ah, these just make me salivate salivate just looking at them. <laughs> I especially like the the printed stuff that they've done. Uh, in the past and more recently, so like this is a very old one, and these are expensive. I'm recalling you spend like five bucks for a single oh piece, yeah, at least a dollar a piece for things like this. But you know, like that is just golden. I mean, <laughs> come on, how can you not love that? So I will, I I will be looking to do as much food stuff as as reasonably possible in the future. I certainly have plenty of stuff to to base it mm -hmm. off. The little sushi pieces, I love that. I've actually had to uh, use some of these as just general filler pieces. I think one of my train cars has a bunch of, of uh, these cupcake pieces from all the friend sets that I've reviewed. They always have cupcakes in them. Yeah. And that's that's another interesting thing to do is, of course, you know, using pieces for purposes unintended originally. Weapons here, so projectile weapons mostly. And, uh, well, I mean, some of these are projectile weapons as well, but, you know, a little bit more tr traditional non-gun things. Uh, tools, my tools bin, and stuff that goes on feet. <laughs> these are some of the most useful. I should probably pull, pull these towards the front because I use them all the time with the, you know, lightsaber hilts and the telescope pieces. They're just use, useful for structure builds mm -hmm. of all sorts of things and creating railing and you know, creating custom accessories for figures. Another one of my miscellaneous bins. This is just all the stuff that I couldn't find a place for with all of these these separations that I have still. Accessories what? like that, there's so many. You gotta there's decide so what you're many. gonna do. What are you gonna do with a scepter? Where does a scepter go? Is that a tool? Is it a weapon? <laughs> <laughs> you know, baby bottle and stuff. And these printed things, I love the little printed uh, tile pieces that are intended to be held by figures. Mm -hmm. You Cell know, they phone represent phones and the, uh, the Simpsons uh, remote control, also the game. Oh, this is a great thing that came from. Nexo Nights was the, the little game pad, you know, the handheld gaming console. So all that kind of stuff that can be held by the figures. Uh, I enjoy uh, you know, hooking, hooking those up with, with new custom people. Um, yeah, you can pretty much see what's here. Uh, there isn't a, a whole theme for this whole, whole one. And then more uh, books. Books are great. I really love the new style of books that they came up with because you can actually open them. And then yeah. you can put a tile, like one of those those tiles, the, the one by two in there. And I also like the ones that are either printed or have stickers. So this is a newer style one. This is an older one. Uh, I don't know if that's actually Harry Potter, one of the older Harry Potter ones, or if it's one of the uh, original themes in, in particular. But yeah, just good stuff to, to give to the, to the people. Again, kind of <laughs> keeping with that theme of thinking from the perspective of the minifigures. And kind of where my whole channel started out, unfortunately, or kind of sadly, bittersweet, is this column here of the large action figure stuff. So I used to have just bins and bins and bins and bins and <laughs> bins of the large action figure pieces. I got a lot when I first kind of came back into Lego through Bionicle. Uh, before Hero Factory came out, I got a lot of lots of, of uh, you know, used Bionicles just all mixed off eBay and then parted them into into parts and used them to start creating mocks which were absolutely terrible <laughs> But <laughs> it got me somewhere exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta start somewhere and then some of the 
Hero Factory stuff. I had a lot of fun doing custom builds for this. Projectile related things again. Got my, my collection of what used to be called Zamor Spheres in the Bionicle days, but they've expanded that out to multiple uses. Those are just interesting looking pieces, especially the, the marbled ones. Right. You know? And some of these things can be used for, you know, like that's, that's intended to be a six stud shooter. It's a play feature, but you can attach things in six places there. And you've got six uh, anti studs there, so you can have things upside down and build up from there. You mm -hmm. know? Take, take inspiration from the shape and not the original Every piece intent. can be used in some different way than yeah. it's intended. Yeah. These heads probably won't be used very much. My favorite use for these heads uh, in the past was when I made my, my little chibi uh, styled figures, which would be these big large action figure heads on minifigure bodies. <laughs> <laughs> those, those were fun because they, they looked really The fun. scale works well. <laughs> yes, it's perfect. They look like little bobble heads. Uh, the numbers of these have diminished greatly. I've done a lot of eBay sell-offs of, of pieces, but yeah, feet. Uh, these are just general still for creating structures that need to be, you know, they need to have some angles or have some flexibility. Same here. And this goes throughout all of the years, going all the way back to 2002, maybe even 2001 with some of the pieces. The ball and socket joint system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then beyond that, it's it's mostly miscellany after that. I do have, whoops, again. <laughs> I do have uh, some technique-specific stuff over here, but there's a lot of miscellany with uh, just containers of various types, and some of them you might not consider to be containers. I mean, again, that's from, <laughs> is that from Scholar or is that from Belleville? I always... I mean, yeah, those mix, things are hard to keep track. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the for... <laughs> At least they, they, they didn't make some interesting pieces, though. Uh, yeah, roundy things, uh, rubbery things, big things. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting vaguer as we go. Down. Hey, tracks. That there works. That works. <laughs> I have a whole other larger bin somewhere else with extra train tracks as well. Um, thing things. <laughs> this, this is interesting. These are actually from um, Duplo educational uh, sets. They did a, an educational sub theme, and they're using you know the same parts as the same mold as the Indiana Jones uh, large you know, stone. Okay. They've just done them in different colors, and they've got pipes that these fit through. Eventually, I hope to use some of those. I'm surprised I haven't seen anybody. I, I, haven't, I haven't really looked, but I haven't. I, I don't remember seeing offhand any anybody doing great ball contraptions with that size mm -hmm. of ball. Have there, you, have has, you? there has been a, a one show, uh, I think we've seen a couple different times, somebody sets up sort of like a, a thing with like, on the top of the table, and then it drops down to the ground okay. uh, using those balls. Using so those, okay, good. Sort of a great ball contraption type of thing. It's mostly just kind of runs along a track, okay. basically. Yeah. Well, that's cool, though. That's cool. Experimenting a little bit with yeah. it. What, what am I thinking? I'm talking to the experts who have seen <laughs> probably more than anybody has seen. If it's at a convention, we've probably <laughs> Exactly, <seen it. laughs> exactly. An absolute miscellany of miscellany. Uh, been there, and a, oh, another one of those. Yeah, so bases from dimensions stuff, and then some technic stuff. This is all spy bots or spy Oh bodies. yeah, that's a uh, primo. You know, got an extra transformer there. So. And then most of the the remainder over here at the end is just uh, technic. I keep on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, just technic technic related pieces. Of, of various sorts. My gears, I'm very proud of the, the gears and stuff. And it just kind of goes from there. That's that's pretty much it for the for the parts that have been well put together. Yeah. And uh, so, how many how many years would you say this collection kind of represents here that you've been you've been putting together? Uh, you know, kind of building this up and organizing it. Yeah, uh, this has been pretty. So actually, my first time getting back into Lego as a as an adult was around 2000. And okay. I still have some of those pieces. So, you need, so pretty much, it's been almost 20 years now then, probably. Yeah, I had I had a second dark age that I went through, which was from, 2000, I want to say, about 2002 until 2010. Okay. Uh, so it wasn't, it wasn't continuous, but I definitely did keep, I did get some divers-themed <laughs> sets back then, and uh, I think a couple of space-related things and some just general town, you know, Legoland. Was it even Legoland? It was probably, was it still Legoland around 2000? Might have been, yeah. So. It's hard to keep, yeah. it gets kind of confusing there. The town really <laughs> stuff. But yeah, I still have some of those. And 
certainly since 2010, it's been a continuous just growth and explosion mm -hmm. of, of pieces. And is that when you started the city then, pretty much in 2010, so when you came? 2010 is, is when I got into uh, Bionicle. Okay. Yeah, uh, that, and that was that's a, a story unto itself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got into Bionicle. I got a specific Bionicle set that that I uh, used as an example in a, a presentation that I did at a company where, <laughs> where I was working. And I really liked it. I kept it on my desk, and it just kind of expanded from there. I didn't get into... Uh, doing, I intentionally stayed away from the brick-based stuff because I knew that it would draw me in. And right. it, it would just, You're like, that's a black hole. I'm yes, not <laughs> yes. I stayed away as long as I could until about 2013, and I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to okay. give it a try. And I was really, I was really scared, actually, when I did my first uh, brick-based uh, construction set review back then because I had just Bionicle, you know, uh, uh, fans at that time, mm -hmm. like 10,000 subscribers, you know, which was which was great, which was awesome. But I, I, I did it just as a test, like a, some small set. I did a, the worst review. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the worst, and people will, people have seen it, and to this day, the worst reviews, my first couple ones. But uh, yeah, I did them, and people didn't revolt. Shockingly, they should have, <laughs> but <laughs> they didn't. And uh, yeah, I was able to, to go ahead into that black hole and just haven't come out since. Great. Well, thanks so much for showing the collection sure. off here. This is uh, great. I mean, very well organized. I think a lot of A-Falls want this type of collection here. So it looks like you've got a, a good workspace then to expand the city and the other builds you do. So yep. thank you so much. Thanks for coming through. <laughs>